So the first major um, line of resistance that the Japanese met uh, was this wonderfully named Jindrinker's line. Uh, the linchpin of the whole line was something called the Shingmun Redoubt, which should have been defended by a whole company, but they could only spare one platoon um, to defend it. Uh, he launched the attack and it was successful, and by the morning of the 10th of December, the Redoubt had fallen. And that basically meant that the Japanese uh, had captured the most important part of the whole line. Uh, the decision was made by the brigadier commanding um, the mainland brigade, as it was called, i.e. the New Territories and Kowloon, plus uh, the general commanding British forces here, uh, General Christopher Maltby. Uh, the two of them, Cedric Wallace was the brigadier and uh, Christopher Maltby was the general, they decided that they would withdraw. And basically that meant that the three battalions, the Royal Scots on the west, the Punjabs in the centre, the Rajputs on the right or the east, would literally head south through Kowloon and through the new territories and evacuate, if you will, the mainland. They would effectively just withdraw from the mainland, cross the harbour to Hong Kong Island. And that is what they did on the 12th of December morning early hours of the 13th of December. Now that guy that you can see in the photograph there, uh, his name is Captain Cyril Jones. He was known to everybody as Potato Jones. We've got, we know quite a lot about him because of course he was commanding A Company and so that was a very important sort of position. That was the linchpin as I say of the whole defensive line. The Japanese captured it, uh, the decision was then made to withdraw um, and uh, Captain Cyril Jones along with the two officers, the artillery officer, his own platoon commander and a number of his men were captured so they were out of action. The Punjabs again some of them came down through Kowloon city area down here in the middle but a lot of them actually made their way over um, to the eastern side and they withdrew down through Devil's Peak and we have accounts of the Rajputs who um, were fighting on the southern tip here on Devil's Peak on the um, uh, southeast side here of, of the New Territories. Um, they, the Rajputs were holding that position. Um, Cedric Wallace, uh, the commander of the Mainland Brigade, had actually been um, the commander of the Rajput Battalion before he was promoted to Brigadier. Uh, and his men put up a very spirited resistance and the Punjabs actually withdrew in good order through the, um, the Rajputs, uh, who in turn withdrew. Now, we, we do know that uh, Cedric Wallace, commanding the Brigade, uh, said to General Maltby, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm holding this position, you know, I'm doing a good job, my men are doing a good job holding Devil's Peak area, why don't you let me stand and fight my ground here? And General Maltby, who himself also, like uh, Wallace, was an Indian Army officer, uh, he said to Wallace, I'd expect nothing less from your men, that you would put up a good fight. So I appreciate what you're doing, but I need you back on the island and uh, then followed a sort of six-day hiatus um, during which, as I said to you before, Mary, the Japanese were bombing and shelling the island and the British were counter-shelling back. The British had no aircraft, of course, so they couldn't, they couldn't bomb the, uh, the Japanese on the mainland. Um, but there was shelling and bombing um, by the Japanese. Twice during that six-day period, twice the Japanese called on the British to surrender. The first call was made early on the morning of the 13th of December, literally a matter of hours after the last defenders had made their way back to the island. And they presented a letter which got it, found its way to the governor, Sir Mark Young, <coughs> in Flagstaff House where we were earlier this morning. And uh, Sir Mark Young replied in terribly elegant diplomatic language, I'm sure, um, no, we're not interested, we're not going to surrender the island. We're on the island and we're going to hold it. A few days later, a second peace mission followed and again this was rejected out of hand by uh, His Excellency Sir Mark Young and he basically said to the Japanese, I'm not entertaining any further discussion on the matter. On the night of the 18th of December, as I've mentioned, the Japanese launched their attack on the northeast quadrant as it's called, a point between North Point, an area I suppose I should say, between North Point and Chai Wan, uh, with the sole aim pushing inland heading to the gap, the Wong Nai Chong Gap, capturing the Wong Nai Chong Gap, putting a line pretty much down the middle of the island as the defenders had divided the two brigades, and then um, taking out 
taking on, perhaps is a better way to put it, the two brigades in their own time, heading west um, and heading south, fighting on two fronts, if you will. That was their plan, um, and that is pretty much what they did. And they then followed a period of seven days or so, very bitter, very bloody, in many cases, hand-to-hand -hand fighting, building to building in the built-up area. Um, but by the morning of uh, Christmas Day, some seven days or so after landing on the island, the Japanese uh, were in Stanley uh, during the course of Christmas Day 41. They captured Stanley and it was basically felt at that point that um, further resistance was useless. On the western side, they had advanced as far as Ship Street in Wan Chai. That pretty much was the front, um, front of the battle front in, in the western side of the island. And the decision was then made by the general officer commanding Christopher Mulvey in the battle box in what is now Pacific Place, that area, uh, to surrender the colony. And he accordingly advised the governor to do so. And the British officially surrendered by late Christmas Day 1941.